world premiere of Beaten to Death. Yes, thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I've got to say first, Sam, uh, no, you're the first director to have had three features mm -hmm. uh, premiere at a night of horror. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, baby! Just a uh, I thought just quickly, th give us a little bit of a background in, in your filmmaking. What filmmakers or movies inspired you to become a filmmaker? Ooh, well, so I always had a love for horror and action. So, like, I love all of the classics, so I'm a big fan of The Exorcist and of course Evil Dead, John Carpenter, I love my Michael Bay, I love my Steven Spielberg, like, I just love Hollywood, I love my budget, I just love the movies, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Self-taught, or did you, you know, did you start with kind of just shooting stuff at home? Yeah, a little bit, so, like, I actually became friends with Benny and Roach, so we've known each other since year 11, and so I actually went to a new school, didn't know anyone, and then I found out about these two guys that were both into film, and then I just like basically forced a friendship onto them, and like I've never looked back. Um, but since then, I, I went to TAFE in Tassie, but you know, largely sort of self-taught with these yeah. guys here. Yeah. yeah. So being your third feature, how easy was it to get this one made? Out of, you know, out of the three features you've made, which was... Actually, this which one was, was the easy, easiest one, and it was the quickest one too. So we were, tr like, we were working towards one that was like a like bigger scale, which just kind of got a little bit too out of hand and a little bit too difficult for us. So we decided, let's scale back a little bit. I came up with this like just really simple concept, like, what would... A story like if a guy got his eyes gouged out and then had to make his way home through the countryside. So he's I'm actually a really nice guy, though, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know and so first, I mentioned it to Benny, and I was like, Benny, I've got this idea. Like, it's a little bit undercooked, but like, what do you reckon? And Benny's like, Yeah, fuck yeah, like that sounds cool. Let's do it. And I was like, I'm not ready to talk to Roach about it yet because like I want Roach to be in it, and I want to pitch it to him properly. But then I mentioned it to Libby up the back there, quite vocal. Thank you, Libby. <laughs> yeah. And then Libby mentioned it to Roach and was like, mate, Roach, Sam's got this idea, what do you reckon? And Roach was like, yeah, let's do it. Any so. excuse for a leading role. <laughs> yeah. And so then we were away. Ben, now you're, obviously you've produced them all and you've co-written as yes. well. Yes. Um, I'm going to direct this one to, to Ben. Yeah. Endings. Now, you know, the, the, the three features, have all come, uh, the, let's say grim, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. Uh, is, you know, did you start with the endings when you when you when it comes to writing them? You know, how do, how does how do you guys collaborate in that sense? You know, when it comes to writing the screenplay, yeah. is it always going to be? It's like no, it's going to end badly. Well, with this one, we we had an idea from the start that we just want to grind this man through the mud, and there was no <laughs> way he was going to make through it alive. I remember when Sam first called me up about the idea, and he just said, "But he got this idea." I want to open a movie with a guy with his eyes gouged out already. And so I was like, okay, how can we work from there? Um, once we realised that he's going to die at the end, we just kind of filled in the blanks from there. With our other movies as well, we always try to keep this grim reality. Like, we don't have supernatural elements in our films. Uh, in this one, there's some abstract stuff going on, but we try to keep it grounded and real. And we just find that with our endings, it's it's just a natural progression <laughs> for where they should go. Yeah. With this one as well, like what's what happens is basically like on the tin, like the movie's called Beat to Death. So yeah, like can't yeah. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You get what you pay for. Yeah, exactly. So originally we had it like, oh he'll be stabbed and then he'll like fall to the ground and we're like, nah man, it's called beaten to death. Like he needs to get on top of him and beat the guy to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did this go through a lot of drafts or uh, did you kind of nut it out pretty quickly? Uh, this this one was pretty quick because, yeah. like, with this one in particular, we were just like, we got a vision for, a vision for this, and it's not going to be for everyone, but we're just going to do exactly what we want. So that's why, like, it's kind of like a little bit abstract at times, like a little bit surreal, um, and it was just, it was just like what we set out to um, achieve. Like, we we feel like we accomplished that. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it forms a kind of loose trilogy of of uh, some, you know. Survivalist tales. What is it about survival that you know the way you want to depict it? What, what is it that appeals to you in that way? Ooh, I don't know. I 
think there's just something about with the characters that we have and the landscape that we have access to, especially filming in Tasmania, it sometimes just leads us onto conclusions that we just feel and go from there. Yeah. Um, with with our movies having shot in, in a similar kind of tone and landscape as well, we don't want to have um, diversions too far away from this theme. And when we did this one here, we'd come to realise that it was very much an end to a unspoken trilogy of sorts. Mm -hmm. And so we really wanted to keep those themes intact with this one as well. Yeah. We basically like make movies about bad men doing really bad things. Yeah. <laughs> Although I know, you know, obviously with this one, uh, as much as it's a uh, you know physical and emotional traverse, there's a geographical one. Like the, you know the the landscape of Tasmania really shines mm -hmm. in this film. Uh, you know it's it's beautifully shot, uh, and there's a desolate kind of kind of beauty. You know, that was that intentional to. Well, that's yeah. Like so, I think the, with the like recent stuff that's come out of Tassie, like you know everyone knows Tassie's beautiful, like it's green and lush and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's what Tassie sort of like become known for, like it's a bit of a brand. But um, where we shot it, um, it's in the Midlands, which is like kind of the middle of the state, where it is like that desolate stuff. Um, and that's like where my family is from, mm. and so like we use a lot of those connections to get to the locations that we did. And so like you just got these like big, like wide open paddocks and like mm. you know, we went up the mountains and stuff like that. And yeah, like it's it's I think it's a different aesthetic to what you typically see out totally. of Tassie. Totally, yeah. totally. Tom, hi. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the shoot. I mean, <laughs> oh, I, 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 it, it looks like it was grueling. Don't, uh, don't tell me, you know, you, you do a lot of stumbling around. Uh, sure. You know, how, how demanding was Sam as a director? Did he allow you to improvise? Did you? How, how much kind of rehearsal was going on? There? More spew. More spew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think it was was um, obviously we had a, a script to shoot with, but I think we were. Pretty, it was pretty open with you know improvisation and trying to just go where the scene sort of took us and I think you can have a good idea of how the scene's going to work out but then when you're in there with your eyes covered up, covered in muck, uh, you can't see anything and have someone beating the shit out of you for, for sort of four hours, it, it sort of goes the way that it goes. So. Um, no, it was great. <laughs> uh, it, it was simultaneously the, the best and worst <laughs> shoot I've ever been involved with because it was genuinely uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, for the whole thing. But I think that really informed the performance. It just meant that I didn't really need to act. If you're actually survive. suffering, then you, you, know, you, you don't yeah. really need to worry too much about what's going on. So. But, you know, someone like, like Dave, who was my sort of scene partner in some of the biggest scenes, we sort of really played off one another and, and sort of, I think, really elevated those yeah. bits and pieces. So. Did you actually shoot uh, a lot of it in sequence or...? Uh, no, 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 it was pretty very much out of sequence. Yeah, yeah, like because, yeah. you know, like we, we all live in Tassie, but, um, you know, Dave had to come down to an end a few days with Dave and things like so. Yeah. Do you... Now, do you guys write with actors in mind, or like, what, what's the casting process here? Like, how you know? Do you, yeah, do did you, you did, in mind? <laughs> did, did Tom audition for you, or you wrote like Tom's going to be in this? Yeah, we're basically, gonna, we're going to beat the living shit. Yeah, out. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Who yeah. else would go through? This? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. No, but, so we wrote, we we wrote, wrote him from the start, and then um, we were lucky enough to find Dave. So we'd seen a bit of stuff of Dave online. So that's Dave Tracy over there. Our Ned, our Ned. <laughs> Stuff, we're like, we want this guy, and yeah. so yeah, we like got in contact with him. And he Amazing presence, really lucky enough to say yes. Yeah, and, and like, I love it that we've got like Rochus, a man of you know, you're a smaller build like myself, and that's okay. <laughs> and then you've just got like big Dave, there's like just this, this big, Fills the screen, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Just tosses him like a rag doll into walls and into the mud, and yeah, all that fun stuff. Now, you um, you edited the film. Yes. And you've co-edited all, all the other features as well. Mm -hmm. uh, are you a self-taught editor, or did you...? In, yeah, did but, you... like, even being honest, like, it's a little bit out of necessity. Mm -hmm. um, because, like, we are working with micro-budgets. Yeah. Um, and so you've always got limited resources, and I've always found it... Well, the, the last couple of... Well, I 
I didn't edit Blood Hunt, but the last uh, slaughterhouse and this one I did. And it's just been easier for the process. Um, so Do you the, enjoy that stage of, of the filmmaking? Nah, it takes way too long. <laughs> <laughs> too many decisions. Yeah, exactly. So, like, next movie, like, I'd love to take on. Uh, I mean, do you, like, some directors shoot editing in mind, like, so that the way um, you I think yeah. It? Yeah, I think you have to. And, and with this one, I shot it myself, again, like, out of necessity, mm. because um, it was sort of in the second year of COVID. And so, um, yeah, we had, like, a really small crew with this. Yeah. So, like... Um, I directed and, and was a cinematographer. Benny over here produced and did the sound. Um, then we got the two up the back there. Dan Make up and, and line producer or yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. And so oh, like we're really small crew and just um like we dealt with a lot of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, what did you shoot on? Um, it was a little Sony A7S3. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, actually, the shooting. So. You know, you with what uh, Blood Hunts 2015? Yeah, did you? Has technology changed? Like, you know, when you shoot on, what did you shoot that on? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, so Blood Hunt we actually started shooting in 2012. Oh right. Yeah, and it just took that long to get it out. So I'm like, ah, oh, 2015. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the new stuff, like, you can get like, I mean, you, you've still got to kind of know what you're shooting, but you can get just so much more out of it more margin for error as well, which is handy. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I love the little Sony that we shot this on, and like it's very portable and like, autofocus and all that good stuff. And it's really good for like our style of filmmaking, which is like pretty run and gun. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. 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 Um, so the, yeah, the look, now the look, the cinematography is fantastic. Um, I was, I was kind of curious about, uh, how is that achieved? Like, do you is as much of what are we seeing in there? Is that sh is that in camera, or did you do a lot of post grading kind of thing? I mean, it looked you know it's got a great look. Yeah, well, thank you. So like, um, I I don't know. Like, I just I'm just I'm not skilled as like a, a cinematographer that's like particularly good at like lighting scenes. But I think that um, well, what I try to do is just kind of like capture what we've got and, and like what's natural. Um, and so I think like the biggest part of um, what we got on camera there was just like your locations, like your locations work for so much. So, um, you know, we didn't build any sets, like the dirty old farmhouses, like that was our mate. We're like, can we shoot in a dirty old filthy farmhouse? And he's like, yeah. And like that sort of production value just like really lifts the look of it. Yeah. And like shooting at the right time of day and stuff and um, you've, got to, you've got to work for it. Mm. Um, and if you do that, then you know you get the beautiful sunsets and sunrises. And yeah. yeah. And actually, we were really happy with the um, the big sunrise um, that, yeah. shot early on. So we actually shot that at sunset, and it was like this massive mission to like get the right hill for Roach to be on, the right hill for me to be on, position him like exactly where the sun is going down. The sun came down. We had to like run up the hill to like get another one, then run up again to get another one. And yeah. so, yeah, like, but stuff like that, like, it's challenging, but it's fun and like super rewarding if you. Yeah, basically, we don't have the money to use CGI. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was going to bring me on. Old school. Yeah, like, yeah, like, no, it's, there's no fakeness. Yeah, well, like, that brings me to my next question, which was, you know, special effects, um, you know, obviously practical. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, I was curious about your opinion on, on the use of CGI in films and, and the use of practical. Yeah, the Avengers are terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, CGI is I think every filmmaker you talk to is going to be like practical, practical, practical. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like we had discussions about like could we do um, Roach's look digitally, but I think doing a practical, like it feels real. I mean, it makes it a bit of a continuity nightmare, or can be, when you're using a lot of practical effects and you're shooting out of sequence. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's yeah. blind. Yeah, and so the, 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 like yeah. the, the prosthetics we had, like, Roach yeah. is actually blind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it made just no, blocking three hours uh, almost a day, impossible. Every day. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, the, the job for, for, for Danica, a very yeah. talented makeup artist, <laughs> yeah, was, was, you know, almost insurmountable. It was a fucking but, nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and you had someone trying to make their way through scenes who couldn't see. Yeah. So, yeah. like, the amount of extra takes that we had to do just because I walked in the completely wrong direction, or, you know, something sort of like here, that. Here, here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A um, very emotionally so yeah, unstable it, actor. It comes with so its problems, but, of, of course, you know, the, 
A, the budget necessitates doing it practically, and B, I think you, you just get a, a better result, you know, doing that rather than having these sort of, sort of CG holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's real what you're doing, like you're actually searching for the yeah. doorknob or the knife Absolutely. or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, you mentioned, uh, Ben, about, uh, you know, deliberately wanting to make your, your, the films uh, naturalistic, realistic, you yes. know, not, not, um, not involving supernatural or anything, you know. Um, so, what, what are some of the, what do you feel are the most important elements that you think filmmakers, when they're making a horror movie, need to kind of adhere to, or do you think rules should be broken? Is there, you know, yeah. is, there, is there taboo? I, I, I don't think there really is a taboo when it comes to genre films. Um, this movie is a good example of it because we set out knowing that we were going to break many rules with this. Um, with the opening, with it being shot out of sequence, uh, Roach walking towards the camera, then cutting to 48 hours, that's something I personally can't stand <laughs> in films and television. But in this project, I was like, there's no rules with this. We can do whatever the fuck we want. We have a sequence that's in black and white. I don't care. Like, it's just, it just felt right. It's art, art, man. It's <laughs> art, you know? Um, and then with some of our other films, we've had some things where it might be frowned upon, um, but it's, it's all about experimentation. Hmm. Um, with this as well, part of the challenge for it was getting so much real and practical for it, I find that with when you bring CGI and digital elements into it, I think CGI and digital certainly has its place. Um, however, I think there's something in the brain where you can look at something and go, that isn't really there. Whereas when you look at Roach with his eyes gouged out uh, in the shot where he falls down from the wall, that's real. Like there's real things there that you could reach and touch. If we did something that was kind of digital over that, it would take away from that essence, I find. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Same with the, with the large sun scene, we contemplated doing that. Um, it's visual effects as well. Uh, but we held to our guns and I'm super happy with that result. Like it yeah, looks you like a real sun. Yeah, you, you can know? see the subtle things where like <coughs> sort of the bit of a ripple like around the ring of the sun and just like the subtle movements. Yeah. yeah. If it's yeah. achievable, you should just go and do it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think uh, there's room for the filmmakers or horror filmmakers to be self-indulgent, or do you think they, you know, need to be responsible to a degree to, if they want to sell a film or to, to reach certain uh, levels to, yeah. to entertain an audience or whatever? Yeah, do you yeah. feel responsible well, in that way? Or? With our previous two films, I kind of went into them as a matter of what can we sell. Um, with Blood Hunt, it was like, what can we achieve? What can we do? And what is going to be marketable? With this one, I didn't want to be thinking about how am I going to sell a man getting beaten to death for an hour and 30 minutes. I went, no, I want to make this movie. And mm -hmm. that's the most important thing about it. So I think if we can get away from people worrying about how is this going to perform and more what do I want to do, I think you know, we might have a better sample of movie. Do you think uh, do you think there'll be room enough to do that kind of with bigger budgets, or do you think that'll only ever be with micro budget filmmaking? Well, can I answer that? Yeah, go for oh, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, I, I think 